Hey, what's going on guys? This video, we're going to create a method to search a list for a particular user. You can generalize this to searching a list for any custom object, but in this situation, we have a user object, so that's what we'll be working with. Pramp is a free mock interview platform where you can develop your technical interviewing skills. Practice coding with live execution of all major programming languages to solve real interview questions. Interview types include data structures and algorithms, product management, behavioral interviews, system design, front end, and data science. I've personally used this service to successfully crash course for a software engineering interview. Lots of people are having success getting positions at companies like Amazon, Google, Twitter, and more. Check it out, I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. So we'll go into our user class and we're going to make this as a static method. So I, I'll put that at the bottom and we'll call this search list and we'll keep it void for right now. We'll talk about what the return type should be in a second. And inside the parameters, we're going to need a list of type user. We'll call them users. And then we're also going to need a first name and last name. So we'll make those strings. Now we're going to iterate through the list passed in, I'm going to use a for loop. So we'll start with i is zero, and then we'll have this go as long as i is less than users dot size, and we'll increment by one. Then we'll say if, and we're going to basically do a condition to see if the user is a match. So inside the if, we'll say users dot get index i, then we'll say get full name. Now we have two options here. We could concatenate the first name and last name with a space in between them to see if it matches. Or alternatively, we could take a full name as a string. So it seems like a good opportunity for an overload. So why don't we do that? This one will concatenate. We'll say first name plus a space plus last name. And in this situation, we're just going to return the index. So since i is an integer, we need to make this int. Now we need to make sure we always return an integer even if it's not a match. So in that situation, we're just going to return negative one, which basically is a way to say it wasn't found. All right, now let's do an overload of this. We'll say public static int search list. This is also going to take that list. So a list of type user called users, and then it'll take a string full name. Now, there's no sense in recreating code whenever we can avoid it. So what I actually want to do is I want to take all this code and I want to cut it, not copy and paste it. I want to get rid of it in the other method and paste it here. And what we can do is we can actually invoke this overload from this method by just combining the first and last name. So all we have to do is say search list. We're going to pass in the users, so we're just moving it along. And then for the second argument, we're just going to say first name plus a space plus last name. This is all going to get concatenated, put a semicolon there, and this still needs to return. So once this is done, we need to do something with that value. So what we can do is we can just say return. So the order of this, this will be evaluated. That number is going to be then returned to the caller. So let's give this a try. Just make sure our code works first. And we also need to update this a little bit because this is looking for first name and last name. So we'll just replace that with full name. All right, let's give it a try. Go to our code. We have this list with me and you in it. Now let's create a search request. So we'll do this inside of the print line and we'll just say user dot search list. We'll pass in our users list. And let's say we're looking for Charles and we're just going to change his last name. So there's no confusion here. I was doing that as a joke earlier, but I realized it was a bad idea. All right. So Charles N run this and you can see we get negative one. So something's up. So what's going on here? I actually know exactly what's going on. Taking a look at our user class at somewhere in here, we have a two uppercase. And we're also changing the first name to lowercase. So we're, we're basically manipulating the casing. So we could do the same thing with the very, with the arguments passed in, or if it's net, if it's possible, we can just clear this out just so everything is the same. Uh, just so there's no weird confusion, nothing freaky is going on and it should be good to go. So let's run it and see if anything changes. Still not quite. 
So yeah, I fell for like the most obvious trick here, guys. I even talked about this earlier on in the videos. We're doing a comparison using this, but as we know, that's not a valid way to do comparisons in Java. So we actually need to use dot equals and then pass in full name. All right, let's try it now. I'm gonna comment those out and run this. And now we get the value we expected, one. Oh, so the main thing I wanted to show you guys was the overloading, how we can basically call another version of the same method after we do a little bit of tinkering with the parameters by combining them into one. So hopefully that was helpful. And hopefully now you understand how to do a simple search by iterating through every single element and comparing some values.